Welcome to Live in the New Life with Valentine Okeke. You shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. We'll continue from where we stopped. We've been talking about the force of patience. And we said that it is hope that produces patience. And patience is the force that produces endurance. And endurance is the capacity to remain calm or firm under suffering without yielding to anger, resentment, despair, distress, bitterness, or self-pity. We went ahead to talk about the functions of patience. And we said that the first function of patience is to produce endurance. We looked it up at um, James chapter 1, verses 2 to 4. Also, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 6. Then Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 3. Now, we need to find out how to endure. What does it mean to endure? How do you endure? What helps you to endure? The first thing that you do in order to be able to endure, I want you to write it down, is to strip off every weight, especially the sin or bad habit. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. Let's quickly look at it. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. It says there, therefore, since we are surrendered by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily hinders our progress. For us to be able to endure, the first thing that we need to do is to strip off every weight, especially the sin. And I said the sin simply means that peculiar bad habit, that peculiar thing that is hindering you from fully obeying the word of the Lord, that peculiar thing that is besetting you, causing you to always fall. The first thing that we do is to strip it off. Then the second thing that we need to do is to forget the past. Let's look at Philippians chapter 3. Paul said, this is one thing that I put all my energy to. Philippians chapter 3, verse 13. He said, no, dear brothers and sisters, I'm still not all that I should be, but I'm focusing all my energies on this one thing. Forgetting the past. Tell your neighbor, forgetting the past. Focus all your energy to forget about the past because there is nothing you can do about it. It's gone and it is gone forever. The best you can do from the past is to learn from it. The mistakes of the past, you can only do something about it by learning from it. But you cannot change it. The only way you address it is to correct it. Well, when you spend all your time reflecting on the mistakes of the past, it will lead you to nowhere. It will only bring sorrow to you. And at the end of the day, if you're not careful, you begin to suffer from depression. So you must put all your energies towards forgetting the things of the past. Then, not just forgetting about the things of the past, the second side of the coin is for you to focus on the future. So that's the number three thing that you need to do. Because if you go back to that same scripture, it said, but I am focusing all my energies on this one thing, forgetting the past, and looking forward to what lies ahead. The third thing that you need to do to be able to endure whatever trials that you're facing is to learn to focus on the future. Put all your energies towards that. Why is it important? If you go to Psalm 31 verse 15, 
you will find out there that your future is in God's hands. So when you focus on the future, you're simply relying and trusting in God to see you through. Why? Because he said in Jeremiah 11:29, I know the thoughts that I have towards you, thoughts of good and not of evil, because I have an expected end for your life. So cultivate the habit of focusing on the future. Then number four, to enable you to endure, determine to reach the end. You must make up your mind that in this race of life, I must get to the end. I will never forget what happened. Was it last month when we went to our children's school for the Inter Hospice? They were doing this long race, the call mile. The little girl that came last, others had already finished. She still had uh, almost two rounds to make to finish the race. And she continued with that race to the extent that the principal of the school had to join her to encourage her to complete her race. And come and see the resounding applause that she received, more than even the people that came first, second, and third. So she understood that principle of making sure that you finish the race. Whatever you have set your hands to do, no matter the challenge, no matter the pressure, endeavor to get to the end of it. It is only when you get to the end that you will be able to receive the benefit. So in that same Philippians chapter 3, verse 14, it says, I strain to reach the end of the race and receive the prize for which God, through Christ Jesus, is calling us up to heaven. So always strain to reach the end of the race that God has placed before you. Your life is like a race. You must keep making that effort. Then finally, which is the fifth point, do not get tied up in the affairs of this life. It is very important. Once you get entangled with the affairs of this life, you're going to find it extremely difficult to be able to forge ahead. So Second Timothy, that was the advice Paul gave to his son Timothy in Second Timothy chapter 2. I'll read verses 3 and 4. He said there, you have heard me teach many things that have been confirmed by many reliable witnesses. Teach these great truths to trustworthy people who are able to pass them on to others. Verse, uh, verse 3, endure suffering along with me as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Verse 4, and as Christ's soldier, do not let yourself become tied up in the affairs of this life. For then you cannot satisfy the one who has enlisted you in his army. So when you get yourself entangled with the affairs of this life, you will not be able to satisfy Jesus Christ who has enlisted you in his army. For you to be able to endure trials, you must get to that point that you don't allow yourself to be tied up to the affairs of this world. Then we said that the second function of the, of the fruit of patience is to promote unity among believers not just believers, also among families. And how does this happen? We must learn to overlook the faults of one another. We saw that in Colossians chapter 3, verse 13. And we said that when faults meet no patience, the result is unforgiveness, bitterness, strife, resentment. But when fault encounters patience, there is forgiveness, there is mercy, there is love. Then we said that the third function of the fruit of patience is to enable believers to obtain the promises contained in the Word of God. And in order to be able to obtain these promises, you must believe and stand on the Word of God. 
you can check out Hebrews chapter 6, verse 12, then Hebrews chapter 10, verse 36. And we must come to the fact that God is faithful. We can always trust him to keep his promises. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 23. Today we are going to study how to cultivate the fruit of patience. That is the main topic for today, how to cultivate the fruit of patience. The first thing in cultivating the fruit of patience is to keep the word of the Lord. For you to cultivate the fruit of patience, you must learn to keep the word of the Lord. And the key to keeping the word is to obey from your heart. Let's see the advice of Solomon to his children. In Proverbs chapter 3, verse 1, Solomon speaking, he said, My child, never forget the things I have taught you. Store my commandments in your heart. Where are we supposed to store God's commandment? In our heart. When we allow the commandments to remain in our head or in our mind, when trials and tribulations come, but when we store the word of God in our heart, it helps us to stand. It helps us to resist every type of trial or tribulation that comes our way. Is that okay? Then to retain and obey the word, a price must be paid. And the first of that price that you have to pay is that you must stop reading sermons and accept each message as it is God speaking to you now. You know, too many times when people go for service, they are only interested in finding out whether it was a good sermon or not. It's only a good one when it tickles their fancy. But any someone that touches on their habit, that demands a change in their behavior, as far as they are concerned, that is a bad someone. So the first thing that we must do is to stop writing summons and regard every word of God that we hear as God speaking to us right now. When we do that, we are cultivating the fruit of patience. Then secondly, we must study the word for ourselves. Why? Because the thing that you dig up yourself, there is every tendency that that thing will last longer than any other thing. What you discover yourself, not the one that people handed over to you. You have more confidence when you receive the revelation direct from God. There is an encouragement, there is a motivation for you to hold on to that that you have received from God personally than the one that is being handed over to you. It's just like making money. When you are left with so much inheritance, there is every tendency that you will not work hard. You just keep spending. But the money you generate yourself through hard work, you don't spend it anyhow. You don't waste it. Why? Because it is your sweat. But when it's other people's sweat, there is every tendency for you to lavish it. But the one <laughs> that came from your sweat, you preserve it. You cherish it. When you go to Hebrews chapter 10, verse 32, you see what we are talking about. And of course, the advice that Paul gave to his son Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, he said you have to study to prove yourself acceptable to God. So in everything that you're doing, get the skill, get the necessary information. But as it relates to patience, you must have to study the word of God for yourself. 
Because that is the only thing that has the ability of sustaining you when the chips are down. So that takes care of the first thing that we need to do. Keeping the word of God. Storing it up in our hearts. So that in times of trial we will have something that will hold us up. Let's look at Proverbs chapter 4. We will read actually from verse 1 to 13. So that we can see the import of taking in the word of God into our hearts. Proverbs chapter 4, I'll begin to read from verse 1. He said, my children, listen to me. Listen to your father's instructions. Pay attention and grow wise, for I'm giving you good guidance. Don't turn away from my teaching, for I too was once my father's son. Tenderly loved by my mother as an only child. Verse 4. My father told me, take my words to heart. Have you seen it? Take my words to where? To heart. Follow my instructions and you will live. When you take God's word to heart, you will live. Verse 5. He said, learn to be wise and develop good judgment. Don't forget or turn away from my words. In other words, what he's saying is keep my words. Don't turn your back on wisdom, for she will protect you. Love her, and she will guide you. Getting wisdom is the most important thing you can do. And whatever else you do, get good judgment. If you prize wisdom, she will exalt you. Embrace her, and she will honor you. She will place lovely writ on your head. She will present you with beautiful crown. Verse 10. My child, listen to me and do as I say, and you have a long good life. I will teach you wisdom ways and lead you in straight paths. If you live a life guided by wisdom, you wouldn't limp or stumble as you run. Verse 13. Carry out my instructions. That means obey them. Don't forsake them. Guard them. For they will lead you to a fulfilled life. Have you seen it? Verse 13. I'll read it again. He said, carry out my instructions. That means obey my instructions. Keep my instructions. Don't forsake them. You know, something you keep, you don't forsake. He said, guard them. That means protect them. For they will lead you to a fulfilled life. If you want to lead a fulfilled life, you must learn to keep the word of God in your heart. When you store the word of God in your heart, when the trials of life confront you, you see something to stand on. It becomes an anchor for you. We are talking about how to cultivate the fruit of patience. And we said that the first thing that you learn to do is to keep the word of the Lord. And that the key to keeping the word of the Lord is to obey it from your heart, not from your mind. When you obey the word of God from your heart, you will receive the benefits that is embedded in the word. Then number two is by experiencing tribulation, trial, difficulties, problems, and challenges. And some of you will say, but I've been going through trials. Well, I've been going through tribulations. I've been having challenges. I've been having problems. The truth is that going through trials does not necessarily produce patience in one's life. But what produces patience is our response to trials and the attitude that we display during those trials is what determines the degree of benefit that we derive from the trial. So just going through trial 
does not produce patience. But the way we respond to it, our attitude towards it is what makes the difference. Trials actually help us to learn patience and endurance. Let's look at Romans chapter 5, verse 3. Romans chapter 5, verse 3. It says that we can rejoice too when we run into problems and trials. Have you seen it? For we know that they are good for us. They help us to learn endurance. Fancy that. That we can rejoice when we go through problems and trials. For we know that they are good for us. Why are they good for us? They help us to learn endurance. Verse 4. And endurance develops strength of character in us. And character strengthens our confident expectation of salvation. And this expectation will not disappoint us. For we know how dearly God loves us. Because he has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with his love. Did you get that? God expects us to rejoice in our trials and troubles. Why? Because our trials and troubles, they help us to produce the fruit of patience. Knowing that the fruit of patience is being developed is what helps us to glorify in our trials and troubles. When you're going through troubles, when you're going through problems, when you're going through trials, when you're going through persecution, God expects us to rejoice. Why? Because it helps us to develop the fruit of patience. That's the major benefit that problems bring into our life. And no human being is immune to trials and problems. No human being is immune to trials and problems. That's why in James he said, count it all joy when we face diverse troubles, all kinds of troubles, count it all joy. Why? Because God expects you to realize that it is going to help you to produce the fruit of patience. Is that okay? Let's see James chapter 1. I'll begin to read from verse 2. It says there, dear brothers and sisters, whenever trouble comes your way, let it be an opportunity for joy. If you're going through any trial or troubles now, God says, let it be an opportunity for joy. Why? For when your faith is tested, your faith simply means the word of God that you're holding on to is being tested. God wants to see whether you're just confessing his word or you're truly believing his word. That's why he will allow the tests to come. He says there that your endurance has a chance to grow. Let it grow. For when your endurance is fully developed, you will be strong in character and ready for anything. Our trials help us to develop endurance. And when endurance is fully developed, we become strong in character. And at that point, we are ready for anything the enemy throws across our life. The question that we need to ask ourselves today, during our trials, or while we are going through the troubles that we are going through, are we waiting on the Lord or are we worrying? Did you get the question? Two questions. Am I waiting or am I worrying? When you are going through your trials. So those that are waiting during trials, they are the ones that will develop patience. While those 
who are worried develop spiritual paralysis. Why? Because we are told that those that wait upon the Lord will do what? Will renew their strength. Let's see the 40. Isaiah chapter 40. I'll begin to read from verse 29. He gives power to those who are tired and worn out. He offers strength to the weak. Verse 30. Even youths will become exhausted and young men will give up. But look at verse 31. But those who wait on the Lord will find new strength. They will fly high on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. Have you seen it? So, waiting in times of trial, in earnest expectation, and praying with supplication, intercession, and thanksgiving. So, you eagerly expect the manifestation of your prayer request. That is what it means to wait. So when you're going through trials, either of these two things will happen. It's either you're waiting on the Lord or you're worrying. But God expects his children to wait upon him. And what do you do when you wait upon the Lord? In Acts chapter 1, verse 4 and 14, we have an idea what God expects us to do. You remember, after the death of Jesus Christ, when he appeared to his disciples, he told them to go and wait. Acts chapter 1, verse 4. In one of these meetings, as he was eating a meal with them, he told them, do not leave Jerusalem until the Father sends you what he promised. Remember, I've told you about this before. So he asked them to wait in Jerusalem. And we are told in verse 14 that they all met together continually for prayer, along with Mary, the mother of Jesus, several other women and the brothers of Jesus Christ. So while they were waiting, they were praying. They were interceding with all kinds of supplication and thanksgiving. So God expects us that during our trials, we should wait upon him. And when we wait upon him, we simply maintain an attitude of prayer because worrying does not solve any problem. So we've been able to discuss two things that we need to do to be able to cultivate the fruit of patience. The first we said is keeping the word of God in our heart. And we said that that is the key. That when we keep the word of God in our heart, it helps us to obey him. He said when we are willing and obedient, we are going to eat the good of the land. So we are talking about being able to lead a fulfilled life, as we saw in Proverbs, Solomon advising his children to store up his advice, his instructions in their heart so that they will be able to lead a fulfilled life. And then we said that the second thing that we do that will enable us to cultivate the fruit of patience is to experience tribulations and trials, difficulties, and God expects us not to see it as one big deal, but that we should rejoice while we're going through these things, knowing that it's producing the fruit of patience in our lives, and that it gives us an opportunity to wait upon the Lord. And while we are waiting, God expects us to continually intercede, to pray with supplications and thanksgiving. Then lastly, the third thing that we need to do is to maintain hope. For you to cultivate the fruit of patience, you need to maintain hope. 
Believers who lose their hope will give up their patience eventually. And that's why we are told in Proverbs that hope deferred makes the heart sick. Proverbs chapter 13, verse 12. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. Proverbs 13, verse 12. And I said that believers that lose their hope will eventually give up their patience. Let's see Romans chapter 8. Verses 24 and 25. It says there, now that we are saved, we eagerly look forward to, his, to this freedom. For if you already have something, you don't need to hope for it. But if we look forward to something we don't have yet, we must wait patiently and confidently. Have you seen it? Hope helps us to obtain that that God had promised us, and he helps us to develop patience. A person with hope will patiently wait for God to move on his behalf. But of importance is for you to remember that hope is what produces patience. During difficult and hopeless times, our top priority should be to find out what God had to say concerning the situation that we are going through. In other words, we need to find out what the Word of God declares to be true about our situation. If you're sick, you need to find out what the Word of God had to say concerning sickness. He says in First Peter chapter 2, verse 24, by his stripes you were healed. Not going to be, but you were already healed. He said, my God will supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. If you're worrying about the future, Psalm 31, Verse 15 says that your future is in God's hands. Psalm 68, verse 19. It tells us that on daily basis, God bears us in his arms. When you're conscious of some of these things, he helps you to handle whatever trial that you're going through. Whatever it is that the enemy has thrown across your life, you will be able to deal with it and still hold on unto the word of God. And that is exactly what makes all the difference. Were you able to get something from the teaching today? For us to be able to cultivate the fruit of patience, we need to do three things. The first is to keep the word of God and store it and obey it from our heart. It's when we obey the word from our heart that we will be able to receive the benefits embedded in the word. Then number two is by experiencing tribulations and trials, problems and difficulties. Our response and the attitude that we display during trials is what determines the degree of benefit that we are going to derive from that trial. It's not just experience in trial, but how you respond to trial, that is what makes the difference. If not, everyone that is going through trial, and I said that no one is immune to trials, could have been receiving the benefits of the fruit of patience. But we all know that many people, when they go through trials, they simply bemoan and complain and grumble Many are resentful, many are bitter because they believe that somebody is responsible for what they are going through. But the word of God says, count it all joy when you are going through this. Why should we count it all joy? Because something is being produced in us, the fruit of patience. And this fruit of patience 
produces endurance, and endurance, when it's fully matured, produces strong character. And with strong character, you will be able to face anything in life. Are you following? For lack of character, many people had gotten into trouble because they don't have strong character. With every wind of doctrine, with every little challenge, they throw in and begin to behave anyhow. And at the end of the day, it will cost them their lives. And we said that the last thing that we do in order to be able to cultivate the fruit of patience is to maintain hope. So by maintaining hope, it helps us not to give up. Because truly, any person that has no hope for tomorrow is prepared to take his or her life today. That is the reason why people commit suicide, when they lose hope for tomorrow. But when you still have hope for tomorrow, nothing will make you want to take your life today or now. Are you getting it? That's why hope is very important. But this hope must be anchored on the promises of God. That is what makes the difference. Whatever trial you're going through, the first thing that you need to do is to go and find out what the Word of God says concerning that trial that you're going through. It says that nothing can separate you from the love of God. If you're feeling unloved, just know that God loves you and that nothing, nothing means that whether it is your fault, whether it's somebody else's fault, whether it's the devil's uh, making, none of those things can separate you from the love of God. That means that you can come to terms with the fact that God loves you. And because he loves you, he said, I will give you everything that you want. And God had made it impossible for any situation to overwhelm you. He said that in every trial, I have made a way of escape. We must always bear that in mind, that no matter what we are going through, that there is a way of escape. That means that there is a solution. So all you need to do is to dig in into the word of God, to find out what God had to say concerning that situation that you're facing. Many of the problems that we face today is because of lack of wisdom. And God said, ask God for wisdom, that he will freely give you wisdom. He will give you the knowledge that you need to be able to deal with the challenges that you're facing. If it's sickness, go to the word of God. It says, by his stripes, you are healed, not going to be. It's already been accomplished when they gave him those 39 stripes before he was crucified. He was wounded for our transgressions. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. If it's peace that you need, go and reconcile with your heavenly Father. If you have not given your life to Christ, surrender your life to Christ. And when you do that, oh, I can assure you, the peace of God will flood your heart and your mind. That peace that passes all understanding who carries in your heart. If it's lack, it says there, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in good health even as your soul prospers. The prosperity of your soul as you grow in the knowledge of the word of God you will begin to learn things that will help you prosper. If you begin to learn principles embedded in the Word of God that will help you prosper. And prosperity is not just financial prosperity. Prosperity means you will begin to experience divine health. You will begin to experience divine deliverance. And everything that you set your hands in will begin to succeed. Because he said, I'm going to bless the works of your hands. 
And that was why David told his son, get to know the God of your ancestors. That when you do that, you will succeed in everything that you're doing. And God told Joshua, he said that this book of the law shall not depart from your eyes, that you must learn to meditate on it, how often? Day and night, so that you will learn to observe everything that is written in it. Then when you do that, you're going to make your way prosperous and have good success. You find out that what makes the difference in one's life is what you have taken into your heart from the Word of God. Amen? Hallelujah. Can we all stand? Thank you for listening to today's broadcast. You can join us in worship every Sunday by 9 a.m. for World Feast. Venue is at the 7 Option Parks, Ladoke Akintola Boulevard, opposite Caribou Hotel, Gerki Abuja. God bless you.